What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Yep, it's that time of year again. Shark Week always seems to come around so quickly and to be fair, this year I have been pretty slow at getting this particular episode out. Luckily, because of the time difference though, a lot of you folks over on that side of the pond will be watching this episode the night that Shark Week is starting. So in reality, I couldn't have timed it better. <laughs> Lots of you in the comments have been asking whether I was gonna do this particular video again and I am of course going to oblige. But one of the difficulties that I found with doing it this year is that the Discovery Channel has changed the way that they give information out about the programs that they're gonna be featuring. So annoyingly, we're not really getting that much information about them before they air, which does make doing watch or avoid videos a little bit trickier to do. But today I pulled my finger out and I definitely do have some must watches for you in this year's Shark Week and some definite avoids. Although sadly, because of the way Discovery Channel is now doing it, this episode might be a little bit shorter than it has been in previous years. So. Shark Week is, well, Shark Week. This year it's being hosted by Aquaman himself, Jason Momoa, and let's be honest, who doesn't like this guy? His Hawaiian heritage also deeply ingrains him into marine culture, so I think he's a really good choice for the MC role on Shark Week. So down the years, Shark Week admittedly has produced some absolute shit shows of programs, often making things up don't get me started on that one. And then they've also done programs featuring ridiculous stunts involving sharks, which when you look at from the perspective of a shark conservationist or a shark scientist, it is really, really disappointing to watch. But like I've said before in these episodes, while it's good to criticize Shark Week for the shocking shows that they do, it's also good to praise them for the not so shocking ones. And that way they maybe might learn to make decent episodes every single time. One can only dream. <laughs> so Shark Week is kicking off tonight. Yes, tonight. I think at 8 p.m. Eastern time on the Discovery Channel. Shark Fest has also been running on the National Geographic Channel, I think for a few weeks now. And from what I'm seeing on Twitter, people are generally tending to prefer the stuff they're seeing on Shark Fest on the National Geographic Channel compared to what they see on Shark Week on the Discovery Channel. But today's video is all about Shark Week. So we're gonna be discussing some of the shows this year that I think you should definitely watch and some of the shows that I think you should definitely avoid. Just before we start though, Shark Week's usually a good time to remind you all about these. I'm of course brand ambassador for MyFarlo, which is this awesome animal tracking bracelet company. They do loads of different marine animals and also terrestrial animals to be fair. So if sharks aren't your thing, don't worry, there's plenty to choose from. Remember as well guys, if you wanna buy one of these bracelets, use the link that's in the description of this video to get yourself a sweet 20% discount off any of the bracelets that my follower are selling. Or you can use the discount code SHARPBITES20 to also get that discount, but I would prefer it if you use the link in the description. Right, enough of that then. Up first on my must watch list this year, is serial killer Red Sea Feeding Frenzy. Now, I'm not a massive fan of the name, to be honest, and sometimes that's enough for it to be put on my avoid list, but I do think this is a program that a lot of you Shark Bite subscribers might enjoy. It's clearly gonna be looking at the spate of recent shark attacks that have happened in the Red Sea around Hergada. Now, I did do a video on this here on Shark Bites a few weeks back, which I think a fair amount of you enjoyed, and if you did wanna watch that, you can click that link there. But it's gonna be really interesting to see if in this Shark Week show, they make some of the same conclusions that I did in that Shark Bites episode. It features Brandon McMillan, who's usually on the Great White Shark serial killer episodes on Shark Week. And although he really, really does like featuring on shows that have the term serial killer in the name, he has received a fair amount of praise from marine biologists for those shows. So I do think this one's probably gonna be one you should watch. And if you did want to, it's on tonight. That's Sunday, the 23rd of July, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, next up on my avoid list, we've got Cocaine sharks. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there right now that are yelling at me saying, Chris, no, I really, really wanted to watch this one. But all I can say to you is that it's gonna be full of a load of rubbish. I think they're supposedly gonna be doing an experiment in the show where they put fake bags of cocaine next to fake swans, and then the sharks take the fake bags of cocaine instead of the swans, which supposedly proves that they're out there eating bags of ocean cocaine. I can assure you though, there's gonna be no real cocaine on this show or any sharks that have eaten cocaine. <laughs> I think I've also heard that on the show, they're supposedly gonna be giving the sharks a really concentrated fish powder, which just sends them into an absolute frenzy. And that's supposedly what it would be like had they eaten a load of cocaine. It all just sounds absolutely terrible. So I'm saying avoid. Okay, up next on my must watch list then is Alien Sharks, Strange New Worlds. I'm kind of surprised that this one is on my must watch this year because it features 
Forrest Galanti. I've spoken to you guys before about how I'm not his biggest fan, so I won't tread old ground there. But the reason this one is on my must watch list is that it's probably gonna feature some shark species that aren't regularly seen on Shark Week. It's a program that's gonna venture away from the main sharks that always seem to feature every single year, i.e. great whites, tiger sharks, and bull sharks. I don't know exactly what shark species are gonna feature on this program, but I imagine they're gonna be some of the small, weird, and wonderful ones, which means you're also gonna get to see some really cool adaptations as well. I think Shark Week should always do a lot more programs that feature different shark species. So this one's definitely on my must watch list. And if you guys did want to watch it, it's going to be airing Monday, the 24th of July, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Oh dear, Forrest Glancy, you were doing so well, but once again, you have managed to find yourself on my avoid list. So his next one that's definitely going on my avoid list is Shark vs. Snake, Battle of the Bites. In this show, tiger sharks are supposedly washing up dead on Australian beaches and plucky Forrest Galancy has a theory as to why it's happening. He reckons the tiger sharks are being bitten by the sea snakes and that's what's killing them. So it's pretty common knowledge, at least in the science realm anyway, that tiger sharks are predators of sea snakes. They're regularly found in the stomachs of tiger sharks in both the Western and Eastern hemispheres. But all of the leading research at the moment suggests that some shark species, including tiger sharks, are actually immune to the venom of sea snakes. Why would tiger sharks risk eating these animals if they knew they were going to die as a result of getting bitten by one of them? I could be totally wrong here and Forrest Glancy might be absolutely correct and if he is I'll hold my hands up but I doubt it. So yeah, this one doesn't stand up for me and I'm saying avoid. Okay, moving back to better programs now and up next on my must watch list this year is Monsters of the Bermuda Triangle. Now, by all accounts, this one usually wouldn't be on my must watch list. It's about a big 10 foot poor beagle shark that goes missing in the Bermuda Triangle and all the evidence points to a larger predator that's taken it down. But one of the shark scientists that is featuring on this particular show is Dr. James Sulakowski and I actually really rate his work. He does a load of awesome stuff tracking poor beagle sharks and the disappearance of this particular one has probably piqued his interest a little bit. I'm not really sure what they'll find out in this program because there's plenty of large predators in that area that could have taken down a 10 foot poor beagle or it might have just simply lost its tracker. I've not really got that much information about this program to be honest. So I'm tentatively placing it on my must watch list. Come on James, please don't let me down. If you did want to watch this one then you can catch it on Monday the 24th of July 9 p.m. Eastern time. Okay next up on my avoid list this year and this one come as a little bit of a shock, it's Air Jaws. I know there's gonna be lots of you out there that are saying, hang on a minute, Chris, you had Air Jaws on your must watch list a few years ago. And you'd be absolutely right about that because I did, but don't get me wrong here. I love watching great white sharks breach out of the water. I think it's absolutely epic. But I feel like the show has been done over and over again now that we just seem to be seeing the same thing that's mashed into a different type of format. There's gotta be some better way of showing us great white shark breaches that now isn't through Air Jaws. It's also got Andy Cassegrand in it, who again, I'm not really a massive fan of, which is my opinion. Some of you out there might really like Andy Cassegrand, which is also fine. I just think he occasionally says some weird shit and posts really confusing messages on his social media platforms. So yeah, I'm giving Air Jaws a miss this year. It's on my avoid list. Next on my must watch then is Monster Hammerhead's Killer Instinct. Another questionable title, not gonna lie, but the content of this one actually seems like it could be all right. It's of course gonna be looking at hammerhead sharks and the impressive sizes that they can get to. I think it's gonna feature some cool footage of great hammerhead sharks hunting black tips, which is always cool to see. And the scientists on the show are wanting to prove that great hammerheads are actually feeding on black tips, so they're gonna need to go out and get some tissue samples to do that. It features Dr. Tristan Guttridge and probably his wife Annie as well, and they do tend to do some pretty cool hammerhead research. I'm always gonna back the actual scientists on these Shark Week shows, so I think this one should be pretty cool. If you did wanna watch Monster Hammerheads, make sure you check it out. It's gonna be on the Discovery Channel again, Tuesday the 25th of July. 10 p.m. Eastern time. So you've had a little bit of a flavor there of some of the shows coming up on this year's Shark Week, but to be honest, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Of the 21 Shark Week shows that we're gonna get over the next week or so, 10 of them are about great white sharks, three of them are about tiger sharks, and another three are about mako sharks. That's 16 of the shows that are featuring the same three species. 75% of Shark Week featuring just three species. It leaves five shows for other shark species, and one of them's about hammerheads, and the other one's about poor beagles. It's just all a bit samey for me. Weirdly, there's no bull shark shows this year, which is slightly strange because Shark Week massively likes to milk bull sharks. Milking bull sharks, that was a weird sentence to say. <laughs> 
I just think there's so many other cool shark species that they could do shows about, but every year it just seems to be the same ones cropping up again and again and again. It's just a bit boring for me. I'm desperate for Shark Week to really up its game because the platform is huge, but if you were a person who liked sharks but only ever watched Shark Week, you'd probably only think there were five species of shark in the oceans. At least they're not entirely fabricating programs like they used to do, so that's a start, I guess. What do you guys think about Shark Week 2023 then? Are there any particular shows that you're definitely going to be watching? Do you agree with my list there or are you absolutely raging with me? Because there are always a few of you out there, so let me know in the comments. If you stick around to the end screen though, you're gonna be able to choose between two other Shark Bites episodes we did right here on the channel, all about Shark Week, where I get very, very frustrated at the various stunts and stupid things they do. So if you wait about 10 seconds, you'll be able to click them right here. Also, don't forget about the My Farlow bracelets. What better way to celebrate Shark Week than buying yourself one of these? Make sure you click the link in the description for that discount code. And of course, before you head off, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark my channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos until then see you next time